tonight, he returns with an undefeated professional record. Four victories, no defeats, hailing from and fighting out of Newcastle, England. Introducing Aaron the Joker Chalmers. I'm in the bell ring, the referee in charge, Leon Roberts. Gentlemen, you both know the rules, you both know what I expect. Protect yourself at all times, follow my instruction at all times. As if I ask for a break, I expect a good, clean break. Fight hard, fight fair, fight clean. If you want to touch gloves, do so now. Back to your corners. So we're ready. Aaron Chalmers. Any of nervous people inside this arena, but... Once he starts doing his thing, if he's allowed to, they'll be on their feet. Four fights so far. Combined time. Five minutes, 17 seconds. Can Browning take him deeper than he has ever been? Look, look for, there you go. That's what Corey wanted. He wanted to be in this position. Chalmers, the inexperience I think showed right there. He needs to stick and move and stay on the outside. This is not where he wanted the fight to go. Positive start anyway for Browning. Browning driving that knee through. Thomas should be posted up on that left hand. Oh, nice little transition back to guard. I'd like to see him put the, the foot, uh, his feet on the hips. He's maybe kick him back and stand up to his feet. Nice little triangle transition. Browning's got some good. Says he's much heavier handed, Browning, than people give him credit for. He showed it there. Caught Chalmers with one of those shots. What he is is a dog fighter. Like I said, as the fight goes on, he's going to be in the grill of Chalmers the whole time, trying to make him use energy in places he's not used to. Chalmers doing a good job of trying to look that far side of hook. Good knee to the head right there by uh, uh, Thomas to Browning. He's learning all the time, Chalmers. He's talked so much about that. He's worked hard on his wrestling skills. Might need them here, but what this is doing is this is causing Charles to use a lot of strength in a position he may not be as comfortable being in as, as other people that have been fighting for a longer duration. Look into that. Well, he's trying to lift that underhook. There's no submission there. The, there may be a potential guillotine, but I'm telling you right now that Corey Browning is good. He's got a good ground game, good grappling game. He knows what's coming. He was his previous opponent with that guillotine. He was looking for it again. That. Chalmers needs to circle off. He's making that space to try and get to that guillotine. Corey Griffiths doing, it was who was submitted last time. Corey's doing a good job of trying to get his head up in the sky so he can't get the choke. But this is a good way to get taken down. Corey's doing the right thing here. He's keeping his hips into him. He's going to try to suck him back. Maybe, maybe it will take him down and go to mount. I think Chalmers needs to let, ditch, ditch the uh, guillotine and start lifting the underhook. Yeah, that right side underhook needs to be elevated. What people don't understand is there's a lot of energy being spent right now by Chalmers. There you go. Get the hand back inside. So you can see how he's looking in his corners. That's, that's the signs of a good fighter, someone that's really trying to learn the sport. He's listening to the advice of his corner. I think he needs to circle his back off, maybe open up and get into the open space. This is a lot of wasted energy if he can't get this guillotine. The Jordy Shaw cast are right behind him at the moment. He's not listening to them, though. No. He's listening to what his corner is telling him. He's learning all the time. Nice little knee there. Corey Browning's mouthpiece came out. Must have hit him with a good shot there with the knee. It's also a lot of energy for Corey to be, Corey Brown to be pushing him against the fence like this and holding him in place. If Chalmers can circle off and open up with the hands or at least get to a, a position where he's not thrust against the fence. Still looking his knee for that choke at the moment, Chalmers. But it's taxing on the shoulders and the arms. So when they break, I wouldn't expect Chalmers to have a whole lot of explosiveness with his boxing right off the bat. Takes a second. There's a lot of lactic acid building up. There's a lot of just energy being spent. A lot of blood rushing there at that moment. There, nice little knee. And the knee as they broke there. And then Chalmers with the right hand. The combination. Dropped him with the left. Browning to his feet. Throwing wildly himself. 
Chalmers needs to be careful here. Big swings from Brannick. But Chalmers having the better of this now. Minute to go in the first round. Browning looks tired here. Browning looks tired, but he's got the experience of all the amateur fights to get him through this grittiness. This is where Chalmers needs to show that he's not he's not an amateur type fighter, that he's gonna stay on top and just now gather his breath, slow the pace down, just like I just did after all that action. <laughs> just kind of take a deep breath, let Corey Browning deal with all his weight. Big deep breaths all round at the moment. So much tension inside this place. A lot of love for Aaron Chalmers. Chalmers doing a good job here. Corey's obviously as uh, Browning's obviously as tired as, as Chalmers is. Gotta be careful that triangle. If I was Chalmers, when he starts opening the legs, I would stand up and back out of his guard. And just, this is right where he wants to be. Raining punches down right at the end of that opening round. Had he had longer to baby slice, he wants to do to another big Bellator prospect. Start of round two. Aaron Chalmers knows that he's in a real fight here. Chalmers keeps rushing forward. He's got to be cautious of that. Nice hand off takedown from there. Nice, Chalmers is on his back. Chalmers has a couple things he can do to try to escape here. He can try to recover, push on the hips and recover his guard. Bringing that left leg inside between him and uh, his opponent. Or he can put his back off to the mat. He's got to be careful he don't get caught in that side choke from this position. If Corey Brown is able to jump to the other side, there's a side choke potential there. Stay cool. What Chalmers needs to do here is start pushing on the hips to make space and start hip escaping out. Corey Browning's going to be a little bit more to start bridging and escaping from that position. He can start pushing on the hips, hip escaping out, trying to recover his full guard. This is a smart move by Corey. So Corey Browning, what he's doing right now, Browning, what he's doing is he's just keeping his weight on him. He's having to carry, Charles is having to carry all of his weight as well as Browning's weight. So now, and the ref's not going to stand him up in this position. This is the mount position. This could be a potential finishing position. The ref will very rarely in my career have I ever seen a ref stand somebody up in this position. The reverse of where we were in round one, isn't it? With Chalmers using his weight to try and tire out Browning. Browning in a good spot here. What Browning's doing is putting his forehead on Chalmers' chin, kind of stretching and elongating him out. He's slowly trying to work one of those arms up above his head so he can start maybe attacking a triangle or an arm bar. In the meantime, if you can see this, Browning's hipping into him right at his stomach level or his bread bass level, which is causing him to take different types of breathing. And that different types of breathing ends up changing the pace of the fight because when you get back to your feet, you have a hard time exploding or getting your breath back. Browning loves being the party pooper, and that's where we are right now. In a good way, he goes about everything. Doesn't seem to be too bothered that he's going to go and uh, try and become a snowboard instructor taking a course when he gets back home. He's that kind of guy. It's his great love. This and snowboarding. He's slowly working his legs up. He's just trying to grind down some punches. This is what we saw with Baby Slice. He's not a big devastating ground and pounder, but he just does the work. And right now, Thomas had a hard time devastating because his head's backed against the fence. It's the cumulative attack to back ground and time. The referee's having a close look here. Chalmers in crisis as Browning tries to finish it. Chalmers may have been in crisis there, but nothing really landed cleanly. That's why the ref didn't step in. I think Chalmers actually got the better of the exchange from the bottom, which doesn't, which is very rarely happens. Good position here from uh, Browning. Uh, Browning again in a great position. Chalmers wriggling and moving, and trying to almost learn on the job here. Yeah, 
Murphy looks again. Chalmers still has over a minute of this round to survive. Murphy's looking to step in, but Chalmers doesn't look like he's going to quit. He's still trying to fight and protect himself. As long as he's defending himself intelligently, the ref will continue to let it go. And the other thing as well, Corey Brown is now landing devastating blows. Good transition. Now, this man cost him the fight, though, because he's on top. If he loses this position, Chalmers will get on top and finish the round strong. That might be key. I know he lost the round, but at least that lets the crowd know he's still in it. Yeah, get the crowd going. There you go. Remain in round one. You hear the crowd go electric. This gets them amped up, and that gets their fighter amped up. No question that it's Browning's round at the moment. But Chalmers has certainly re-established himself, and he's given himself and this capacity crowd hope here. He's getting his breath about him right now, but this is a typical fight that I was talking to you about with Fabian Edwards earlier. Fabian looks really going to see. Right now, at the beginning of this round, what kind of fighter Chalmers is? Is he going to be a smart fighter and stick and move and try to land a big punch, or is he going to rush in and get to the clinch? You've got to hand it to Corey Browning from Knoxville, Tennessee, the Marble City. And he is as tough as marble. And again, he looks to this is a get Chalmers position down, for but it's better, isn't it? Yeah. What he needs to do is just try to keep spinning with the way he's trying to twist the ankle. Oh, man. Hit him with a beautiful heel look. Just brilliant. Just brilliant. And he upsets the apple cart again. Corey Browning in the blink of an eye. First baby slice. Now His Jordy Shore friends should be proud of him. I got to tell you, honestly, he fought a great fight. It's just the inexperience of someone who has a lot of fights under his belt. Well, here we go. Let's get the decision. It won't be greeted rapturously. Here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the tap comes by way of a heel hook. Officially, 20 seconds into round number three, the winner by submission, Corey Brownie. Booze ring around the arena. Hats off, as we said, to Corey.